Now, I think it's very fair to say that I haven't been the hugest fan of Brock Lesnar's run these past five years in WWE. Getting past the awesomeness of the moment of him coming out the night after WrestleMania 28 and f 5 John Cena, you know, the fact that his first match at Extreme Rules in 2012 against John Cena, after eight years of being gone, it was like they were trying to send him a message. It doesn't matter if you're a UFC champion. It doesn't matter this or that. You're still in WWE's house. You're still going to play by our rules, and you're going to eat shit and like the taste of it for this one. Um, and then they kind of, like, toiled with him and went into Stupidville with him for quite a while. Then, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you have him end the streak at WrestleMania 30 for ridiculous motives, ridiculous reasons, and I still stand by the fact that it was a really dumb and stupid decision. And just in general, after initially really screwing the pooch with Brock Lesnar and then going through this massive overcorrection, you've gotten to the point now where everything that Brock does... While people want to sit there and talk about big fight feel and this and that, you can have that thought if you want. But at the end of the day, he was just like so many others on the roster in the sense of everything he did felt the same. Every promo that Heyman cut about him was the same. Every build up to a Lesnar match was basically the same. Every match was worked basically the same. And every match ended basically the same. You would have the outliers here and there, but in general, it got to the point when we want to talk about eat, sleep, suplex, repeat, whatever the fuck, eat, sleep, conquer, repeat. It got to the point where he would just show up, be kind of boring, win, leave for three months, repeat. And I don't give a damn how much people want to be thinking about, oh, it brings a big fight feel. You know, that big fight feel can kick rocks if the fights aren't that particularly good. And if you already know how it's going to turn out, then what makes it any different than anybody else? And I think that is at least a somewhat fair question to ask. If you know pretty much every time with a Brock Lesnar feud that it's going to end with him going over and often going over the first time, then why would you continue to invest yourself in anything that he does? What makes him any different other than just the fact that he's Brock Lesnar? And maybe that helps you a little bit, but it doesn't totally mask the fact that it's just very repetitive. It just kind of blends in like everything else. And it feels like one gigantic waste of time. And when you have a guy like Brock Lesnar and all the things that he can positively bring to the table, to me the one thing you don't want to do with the limited amount of time you use him is ultimately have him be one gigantic waste of time. And... Coming up through the tail end of 2016, I've really felt that WWE was just wasting my time, your time, and Brock Lesnar's time and their time. Because everything was pretty much the freaking same. And then, especially at SummerSlam 2016, he's opening up Randy Orton Hardway, which I just think is dumb and stupid. And there, there was no payoff to this. There was no return to this. There was really no reason for this. It's just getting to the point where it's like, enough is enough, and I don't care if the guy goes away. But, with that said, I feel that it is appropriate to call out something good when I see it. And I feel it's appropriate to pay respect for something when I see it. Just because I'm not a huge fan of somebody, even though I'm supposed to be a big muscle mark, and I've never really been a fan of Lesnar, which, go figure... Uh, even though I think it's ridiculous when people crap on a guy like a Cena or an Orton for their five moves of doom and Lesnar's got three if you include the stomp down to the ramp, to the ring. Um, when he does something good and when the company does something good with him, I feel like it needs to be called out as well. And, and I have to say that I'm very appreciative to Brock Lesnar for doing business and actually doing good business. With all that he's done with Goldberg, it is the most interested I've been in anything involving Brock Lesnar in a very, very long time. And that goes back to his first WWE run of 2002 to 2004, and I mean that. At least easily, other than maybe the build-up to his match was seen at Extreme Rules 2012. That might be the one outlier of the exception. Maybe. 
I can't remember a time where I was more interested in something that Brock Lesnar did. And I think Brock Lesnar deserves a ton of credit for this. Because when you started hearing this buzz talking about what was going to be maybe a chance of him and Goldberg wrestling at Survivor Series, you start getting that initial impression of, okay, so Goldberg hasn't been around in 12 plus, 12 and a half damn years. Lesnar squashes everybody. Why the hell are we going to do this when this is just going to turn out to be the same as everything else? But it ultimately hasn't turned out to be the same as everything else. Now, if you're a Brock Lesnar and you're sitting there with limited dates on your contract and limited appearances and knowing what type of value you feel you bring to the table and the WWE has assigned a certain value to you because of what they feel you bring to the table, right or wrong, you don't have to do business any way other than the way that Brock Lesnar wants to do business. So if WWE proposes you something and you don't feel like doing it, you have the leverage, God bless you, to not fucking do it. So much about this world is about leverage and who has it and who controls it. And when it comes to the relationship between Brock and WWE, Brock Lesnar has the lion's share of the leverage. And I applaud him for it. I wish more guys could exhibit the type of leverage that Brock Lesnar does. Now, there's a trick and a danger, I should say, to that. Because when a guy gets too much leverage, they can get too caught up in their own bullshit. And they can start to be difficult to do business with. And they can start to be a little counterproductive. See Hulk Hogan. See Stone Cold Steve Austin. See Bret Hart. See Shawn Michaels. Just some of many examples throughout the history of WWF slash WWE. And I, it felt, kind of felt like it was getting to that point with Lesnar where all he was caring about was giving him somebody to work with at the big shows that way he can get his big payoff and then he would go over and he could mark out for himself. Is the way it kind of felt to me. And we were kind of getting to that point. And when we're getting to the point where we're opening up guys for no real reason the hard way at SummerSlam, doesn't matter if the other guy signed off on it or not. At the end of the day, it's like, where is the return that you're really getting from this? And why are we bothering to continue to do this? It just feels like the same old shit. But massive credit to Brock Lesnar for recognizing the fact that maybe this is all just theory here. I'm not saying this is legitimate fact. I'm not saying this is the way it is. This is just my perspective from the outside looking in kind of the way that I see it. Massive props though to Brock Lesnar for seeing the opportunity with Goldberg. And my thought with the professional wrestling business is always this. It's great if you can do one big feature special attraction type of match. Gives you a few weeks of story, one potentially big payoff, and that's great and wonderful. And if Brock Lesnar would have faced Goldberg at Survivor Series and then ultimately beat Goldberg at Survivor Series, you know, so be it. It would have been a few weeks of buildup, a few weeks to get to a marquee match, and there you go. And Lesnar reigns supreme again. But they didn't do that. Lesnar didn't do that. He decided to do business. Why have one big money match? when you can tie that into potentially months of programming to lead up to an even bigger and more important match at the biggest show of the year. With the major pit stop along the way at arguably the second biggest show of the year at the Royal Rumble. I cannot tell you how much more interested I was in Survivor Series 2016 in large part because of the thought of Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. How there was more interest in the Royal Rumble 2017 on top of the fact that it was just the Royal Rumble in and of itself, in part because you were going to have guys like Taker and Goldberg and Brock Lesnar involved. And now you get to WrestleMania, even though I look at the card, and even though I shudder to think about the potential of Goldberg and Lesnar for the Universal title potentially closing that show, what little interest I have in this year's WrestleMania is in part because of that match and one or two others, and that's it. And when you think about it, even though you probably know how things are going to turn out at WrestleMania, even though you know who's going over, even though you know what's going to happen, how much more interesting has it been the fact that they have actually made Lesnar a little vulnerable? It's one thing to make a monster, and that's great. 
And the WWE used to do a fantastic job throughout its history of creating monsters. But there comes a point in time where WWE does one or two things with their monsters. They either build them up so massively strong that it's not believable if anybody beats them. You could argue in part that's what they did with John Cena for years. It wasn't believable that anybody would beat the dude clean because he always fucking won. Or on the flip side, you build up a monster, but then you just kind of crap the bed with them and they start losing in ways they shouldn't be losing. They start getting pinned by people they shouldn't get pinned by. They start tapping out. And they start doing dumb crap and then they exit stage left Future Endeavor and so on and so forth. But you look here with Goldberg and Lesnar, and there's actual interest here in part because now you've brought some vulnerability to Lesnar. You had gotten to the point with WWE where you've built him up too much. You've built him up to the point where it's not believable if anybody on the roster can beat him. Now, some might argue that just because Goldberg does it, this is a part-time megastar from the past of WCW, WWE. Who says anybody on the main roster can't? Well, at this point in time, you just needed to get some type of chink in the armor of the Brock Lesnar character. You had to create at least some element of belief that if somebody actually goes up against Brock Lesnar, there is a potential chance that he could lose. It gives you more reason to actually care about the match because it gives you at least a little bit of uncertainty about the potential outcome. And if nothing else, the whole business that happened with Goldberg and Lesnar at Survivor Series created that element for the Lesnar character now and going forward. Imagine what would have happened if Lesnar would have just beat Goldberg in like five or six minutes, let's say, at Survivor Series. People really wouldn't have been buzzing about it. People really wouldn't have been talking about it. Then you would have had a major significant issue of what the bluest of blue fucks you were going to do with Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 33. And as long as you have the dude on the roster, you better do big things with him. And at this point in time, other than shaking shit up and sending Roman Reigns at him, you had nothing else other than maybe Braun Strowman those are literally the only two dudes you could viably throw up against Lesnar at your biggest show of the year. Just think about that for a second. With Lesnar being willing to do business, and not only do business, but in my opinion at Survivor Series, do business the right way. Sure, Goldberg could go out there and beat you in five or six minutes, even though you're probably asking a ton out of him. But if you don't need to go that long, why bother? What's going to get people buzzing? What's going to get people talking? What's going to get people to remember this moment and notice this moment and care about this moment and care about what's going to happen going forward? Have Goldberg come out and surprise you and kick your fucking ass. And then you come back out at the Royal Rumble and basically Goldberg quickly eliminates your ass and beats your ass again. Now you've created at least a little bit of a vulnerability there with Lesnar. It's so much more interesting what he's doing on the path to WrestleMania, and I argue going forward as well. All the while, it rectifies some of the previous mistakes, most notably Sting, for the company bringing, back, bringing in this guy who had never been there in Sting's case, who was one of the biggest icons of the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s, a long period of time, one of the greats of all time in Sting, and he never wins a WWE pay-per-view match. His first WWE pay-per-view match, he's jobbing to Hunter at freaking 31. Praise God. Then the next go-round, he's losing to freaking Seth Rollins, who ends his damn career. Now with Goldberg, you get more interest in what he's going to do. There's more of a return on the investment in terms of the merch that he's going to move in part because there's actually a reason to take him seriously. Now you're getting a little added prestige to the universal title because you've thrown it around Goldberg, which means eventually you're going to throw it around Lester, which means the belt means a whole fucking hell of a lot more than it does than when fat ass KO was wearing it around his freaking shoulders. I mean, there's significant payoff here. The things that they screwed up to me with Sting, they've gotten largely right with Goldberg. And while he's not a perfect talent and he has his flaws, at the end of the day, it's nice to see somebody that feels like a big fucking deal that you actually look at him and you feel like they're a damn star. And he's going up against another guy that you look at and Gary and you're like, he should be a damn star. And it's not just a size thing, but it is in part a size thing, yes. But at the end of the day, you look at a Bill Goldberg and you look at a Brock Lesnar and you feel like those should be fucking main event scene type of world championship guys. And it's so often the case when you look at dudes, Franklin, the WWE, both big and small, that is something that is severely, severely lacking. How many of them do you actually look at 
and truly feel like this is a franchise player. You feel like this is a big-time star, a big-time main event type of uh, franchise building block type of talent. The answer is not much of any at all. And while these aren't guys you're going to build your organization around long term, although the WWE will seem to try and milk these turnips of the past guys since they can't build stars as much as they possibly can, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm so thankful that Lesnar did the right thing and did business. Because short term, it elevated the profile of Goldberg so much. And it feels so much better with what the company's doing with Goldberg in 2016, 2017 than what they did with them in 2003 and 2004. And I also feel like it's easily the most interesting thing Brock Lesnar has done in years. I am so much more interested and invested, even though I know what the result is going to be. And I know how it's going to go down at WrestleMania. And who's winning that match? I'm more interested to see how this plays out. I actually care. Like, legitimately care. And it's a cool thing because now, going forward... When they put Lesnar, Lesnar in a program with a Reigns, a Strowman, a this guy, or a that guy, maybe a Kevin Owens, maybe this guy, or that guy, you actually feel like there is at least some semblance of a chance that these dudes are going to win. You actually feel like there's a reason to get involved and invested in this, because anything could happen. And at the end of the day, Lesnar had two choices of the path that he could go down. He could have either went down path A of doing shit the way he had been the past three years and frankly, in my opinion, just further making himself irrelevant, being boring and stinking up the joint. Or he could be comfortable enough in his character and who he was and comfortable enough with the story to really sell out for it and really commit to it and really go with it and make something out of it. And by God, wouldn't you fucking know, that's what Brock Lesnar did. Because I'm going to tell you at the end of the day, you think back to 2014 and SummerSlam when Lesnar made the massive face turn. What's the best way to get people to hate Brock Lesnar after ending The Undertaker's WrestleMania streak? Yeah, let's have him beat the shit out of Cena for the freaking title. With all of that being said, even when everybody wants to talk about how awesome it was to watch Cena get his shit pushed in for all that time, at the end of the day, that match still went some time. Instead of having Lesnar go over in three minutes or less, which is exactly the type of shit that should fucking happen in that particular case, if you're trying to get him over like that, gangbusters, then you go all the way, but Cena couldn't commit. Lesnar was comfortable enough in who he was as a character and as a performer to sit and comfortable enough with Goldberg and comfortable enough with the WWE and the creative positioning to say, hey, you know what? Hell yeah, I'll let Goldberg beat me in a minute, 26 seconds. Especially because if I'm the heel in this story, it makes sense for me to lose quicker as opposed to getting beat after a long fight. One, from a match quality standpoint, and two, from a story standpoint, because I can talk about the fact that I didn't take him seriously. I can make an excuse for it. Typical heel 101 shit, even for a fucking monster. And then to sit there and instead of doing what would be a more traditional thing the WWE would do, which would be have Lesnar get it back on Goldberg at the Royal Rumble and have Lesnar eliminate Bill Goldberg, Lesnar did the exact opposite. He got eliminated by Goldberg. And there's been multiple other times where Goldberg's quickly gotten one over on Lesnar up to and including this go-home edition of Raw that just aired Monday night. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm still not the hugest Brock Lesnar mark. And there are still things about people not liking this guy or that guy, but they mark out for Lesnar, I think, of just ridiculous and borderline hypocritical. But I'm going to give credit where credit is due. And I appreciate tremendously that Brock Lesnar was willing to do business with Bill Goldberg. Because at the end of the day, this product, frankly, needed it over the past few months. Whether some of you have enjoyed it or not, I mostly have. And most certainly as hell, both that Universal title and WrestleMania itself needed this type of story heading into it. This is at least a match that you feel good about, when, in my opinion, from a business standpoint, when you put it on the marquee and you build your event around. Even though I don't think it should be main eventing the show, it at least has gotten to a point where if they did have it main event the show based off of the story and the performers involved, it does make sense. It's hard to knock it past a certain point. 
So thank you, Brock Lesnar, for doing something that a lot of other guys wouldn't do, which is being comfortable enough in their own skin to sell out and fully commit to something and really make it work. And in the process, allow Goldberg to get some shine, get one last nice run, and make up for a lot of the mistakes of the past. And hopefully come Sunday at WrestleMania 33, both Goldberg and Brock Lesnar are willing to commit and willing to sell out to rectify the mistake of the abortion that was freaking WrestleMania 20. At this point in time, even though it seems silly, I at least, based off of what I've seen over the past few months, have some confidence that these guys might surprise you a little bit. And these might, guys might actually pull it off. Call me crazy, but shit, if you would have told me four months ago that Goldberg was actually going to beat Lesnar in a minute and 26 seconds at Survivor Series, I would have called you a damn clown. Even if that would have been the type of finish that I feel like it should have had. There's no way I would have thought that Lesnar would have ever signed off on it, and he did. He did. And I think it's been a total positive for all the parties involved. I really do.